the king of the city part two i turned set the power pistol at full aperture and poured it to the armored door searing heat reflected from the barrier smoke boiled metal melted and ran through the stink of burning steel i smelled scorched hair and felt heat rake the back of my neck and hands heavy was beaming at me wide aperture but the range was just too far for a fast kill the door sagged and fell in i jumped through the glowing opening hit the floor and rolled to damp out my smoldering coat i got to my feet there was no time now to stop and feel the pain of my burns they would expect me to go up so i would go down the blue tower covered four city blocks and was four hundred stories high there was plenty of room in it for a man to lose himself i ran along the corridor found a continuous service belt and hopped on lay flat rode it through the slot i came out into the light of the service corridor below my gun ready then down and around again i saw no one it took ten minutes to cover the eighteen floors down to the sub-basement. I rolled off the belt and looked around. The whole space was packed with automatics. The Blue Tower was a self-sufficient city in itself. I recognized generators, heat pumps, air plants. None of them were operating. The city services were all still functioning, apparently. What it would be like in another ten or twenty years of anarchy was anybody's guess. But when the city systems failed, the blue tower could go on on its own. Glare panels lit the aisles dimly. I prowled along, looking for an elevator bank. The first one I found indicated the car at the 180th floor. I went on, found another indicating the 20th. While I watched, the indicator moved, started down. I was getting ready to duck when it stopped at the fifth. I waited. It didn't move i went around to the side of the bank found the master switch i went back punched for the car when the door whooshed open i threw the switch i had to work fast now i stepped into the dark car reached up and slid open the access panel in the top then jumped caught the edge and pulled myself up the glare panels inside the shaft showed me the pony power pack on top of the car used by repairmen and inspectors when the main power was off i lit a permatch to read the fine print on the panel i was in luck it was a through car to the four hundredth i pushed a couple of buttons and the car started up i lay flat behind the machinery as the car passed the third floor feet came into view Two men stood beyond the transparent doors, guns in their hands, watching the car come up. They didn't see me. One of them thumbed the button frantically. The car kept going. There were men at almost every floor now. I went on up, past the hundredth floor, the one-fiftieth, and kept going. I began to feel almost safe for the moment. I was gambling now on what little I knew of the Blue Tower from the old days when all the biggest names congregated there. The top floor was a lavish apartment that had been occupied by a retired fleet admiral, a vice president, and a uranium millionaire in turn. If I knew anything about kingpins, that's where Max Arena would hang his hat. The elevator was slow. Lying there I had time to start thinking about my burned hide. My scalp was hit worst, and then my hands, and my shoulders were sticking to the charred coat. I had been traveling on adrenaline since Heavy had beamed me, and now the reaction was starting to hit. It would have to wait. I had work to do. Just below the 398th floor, I punched the button and the car stopped. I stood up, feeling dizzy. I grabbed for the rungs on the wall, hung on. The wall of the shaft seemed to sway back. Sure, I told myself, the top of the building sways fifteen feet in a high wind. Why shouldn't I feel it? I dismissed the thought that it was dead calm outside now and started up the ladder. It was a hard climb. I hung on tight and concentrated on moving one hand at a time. 
the collar of my coat rasped my raw neck i passed up the three hundred ninety eighth and ninth and rammed my head smack against a dead end no service entry to the penthouse i backed down to the three ninety ninth i found the lever and eased the door open then waited gun in hand nothing happened i couldn't wait any longer i pushed the door wide stepped off into the hall still nobody in sight but i could hear voices to my left a discreet stair carpeted in violet velvet eased up in a gentle curve i didn't hesitate i went up the door at the top was an austere slab of bleached teak i tried the polished brass lever the door swung open silently and i stepped across the threshold and was looking across a plain of honey-colored down at a man sitting relaxed in a soft chair of pale leather he waved a hand cheerfully come on in he said max arena was a broad-shouldered six-footer with clean-shaven blue jaws coarse gray-flecked black hair brushed back from a high forehead a deeper tan than was natural for the city in november and very white teeth he was showing them now in a smile he waved a hand toward a chair not even glancing at the gun in my hand i admired the twinkle of light on the polished barrel of a norge stunner at his elbow and decided to ignore it too i've been following your progress with considerable interest arena said genially the boys had orders not to shoot i guess luvich sort of lost his head it's nothing i said that a little skin graft won't clear up in a year or so don't feel bad you're the first guy ever made it up here under his own steam without an invitation and with a gun in his hand i said we won't need guns he said not right away i went over to one of the big soft chairs and sat down put the gun in my lap why didn't you shoot as i came in arena jiggled his foot i like your style he said you handled heavy real good he's supposed to be my toughest boy what about the combat corps more friends of yours <laughs> nah he said chuckling easily some jersey boys heard i had a collar they figured to knock him off on general principles a nifty he stopped laughing the guy rob was mine a remoted job a nice piece of equipment you cost me real dough tonight gee i said that's tough and besides he said i know who you are i waited he leaned over and picked something off the table it was my wallet i used to be in the navy myself academy man believe it or not almost anyway kicked out three weeks before graduation a frame well practically a frame there was plenty of guys doing what i was doing that where you learn to talk like a hood for a second arena almost didn't smile i am perfectly capable of expressing myself like a little gentleman when i feel so inclined he said but i say to hell with it you must have been before my time i said a year or two and i was using a different name then but that wasn't my only hitch with the service when the trouble started i enlisted i wanted some action when the navy found out they had a qualified power section man on their hands i went up fast within fourteen months i was a j g how about that very commendable so that's how i knew about the trick id under the emulsion on the snapshot you should have ditched it macklemore or should i say captain macklemore my mouth opened but i couldn't think of a snappy answer to that one i was in trouble i had meant to play it by ear once i reached arena to get the information i needed that was out now he knew me he had topped my aces before i played them suddenly arena was serious you came to the right man macklemore you heard i had one of your buddies here right i let the word leak i thought it might bring more of you in i was lucky to get admiral hale's deputy what do you want with me 
Arena leaned forward. There were eight of you. Hale and his aide, Wolfgang, were shot when they wouldn't spill to the provisional government, or whatever that mob calls itself. Morgan got himself killed in some kind of a tangle near Denver. The other four boys pulled a fast one and ducked out with the scout you guys came back in. They were riding dry tanks. The scout had maybe thirty ton-hours fuel aboard, so they haven't left the planet. That leaves you stranded. With six sets of federal law looking for you, right? I can't argue with what's in the newspapers, I said. Well, I don't know. I got a couple newspapers. But here's where I smell a deal, Mac Lamore. You want to know where that scout boat is. Played right, you figure you got a good chance of a raid on an arsenal or a power plant to pick up a few slugs of the heavy stuff. Then you hightail out, join up with the rest of the squadron, and with the ordnance you pack, you can sit off and dictate the next move. Arena leaned back and took a deep breath. His eyes didn't leave me. Okay, I got one of you here. I found out something from him. He gave me enough. I know you boys got something up your sleeve. But he don't have the whole picture. I need more info. You can give it to me. If I like what I hear, I'm in a position to help. Like, for example, with the fuel problem. And you cut me in for half. Fair enough? Who is it you've got? He shook his head. Uh Uh-uh. What did he tell you? Not enough. What was Hale holding out? You birds found something out there. What was it? We found a few artifacts on Mars, I said. Not Martian in origin. Visitors. We surveyed. Don't string me, Macklemore. I'm willing to give you a fair deal, but if you make it tough for me... How do you know I haven't got a detonator buried under my left ear, I said. You can't pry information out of me, Arena. I think you want to live, Macklemore. I think you got something you want to live for. I want a piece of it. I can make a deal with you, Arena, I said. Return me and my shipmate to our scout boat. Fuel us up. You might throw in two qualified men to help handle the ship, minus their blackjacks, preferably. Then clear out. We'll handle the rest, and I'll remember with gratitude. Arena was silent for a long moment. Yeah, I could do that, Macklemore, he said finally. But I won't. Max Arena is not a guy to pick up the crumbs or wait around for handouts. I want in, all the way in. This time you'll have to settle for what you can get, Arena. I put the gun away and stood up. I had a feeling I would have to put it over now or not at all. The rest of the squadron is still out there. If we don't show, they'll carry on alone. They're supplied for a sentry's operation. They don't need us. That was true up to a point. The squadron had everything except fuel. You figure you got it made if you can get your hands on that scout boat, Irina said. You figure to pick up fuel pretty easy by knocking off, say, the Lackawanna pile. It shouldn't be too tough. A fleet boat of the Navy packs a wallop. Arena tapped his teeth with a slim paper cutter. You're worried your outfit will wind up Max Arena's private Navy, right? I'll tell you something. You think I'm sitting on top of the world, huh? I own this town and everybody in it. All the luxury and fancy dinners and women I can use. And you know what? I'm bored. And you think running the Navy might be diverting? Call it what you want to. There's something big going on out there, and I don't plan to be left out. Arena, when I clear atmosphere, we'll talk. Take it or leave it. The smile was gone now. Irina looked at me, rubbing a finger along his blue cheek. Suppose I was to tell you I know where your other three boys are, Macklemore. Do you? I said. And the boat, Irina said. The works. If you've got them here, I want to see them, Irina. If not, don't waste my time. 
I haven't exactly got them here, Macklemore, but I know a guy that knows where they are. Yeah, I said. Arena looked mad. Okay, I'll give it to you, Macklemore. I got a partner in this deal. Between us, we got plenty, but we need what you got, too. I've made my offer, Arena. It stands. Have I got your word on that, Macklemore? He stood up and came over to stand before me. The old academy word. You wouldn't break that, would you, Macklemore? I'll do what I said. Arena walked to his desk, a massive boulder of jadeite, cleaved and polished to a mirror surface. He thumbed a key. Send him in here, he said. I waited. Arena sat down and looked across at me. Thirty seconds passed, and then the door opened, and Sten walked in. Sten glanced at me. Well, he said, Mr. Smith. The Smith routine is just a gag, Arena said. His name is Macklemore. For an instant I thought I saw a flash of expression on Sten's face. He crossed the room and sat down. Well, he said, a very rational move, your coming here. I trust you struck a profitable bargain. He looked hard at me, and this time there was expression. Hate, I would call it, offhand. Not much of a deal at that, Sten, Irina said. The captain is a tough nut to crack. He wants my help with no strings attached. I think I'm going to buy it. How much information has he given you? Irina laughed. <laughs> Nothing, he said. Max Arena going for a deal like that. <laughs> Funny, huh? But that's the way the fallout fogs him. And what have you arranged? I turn him loose, him and Williams. I figure you'll go along, Sten, and let him have the three guys you got. Williams will tell him where the scout boat is, so there's no percentage in your holding out. What else? What else is there? Arena spread his hands. They pick up the boat, fuel up, someplace, and they're off. And the captain here gives me the old academy word. He cuts me in once he's clear. There was a long silence. Irina smiled comfortably. Sten sat calmly, looking at each of us in turn. I crossed my fingers and tried to look bored. Very well, Sten said. I seem to be presented with a fait accompli. I let a long breath out. I was going to make it. But I would suggest that before committing yourself, you take the precaution of searching Mr. McLemore's person. One never knows. I could feel the look on my face. So could Arena. So, he said, another nifty. He didn't seem to move but the stunner was in his hand. He wasn't smiling now, and the stunner caught me easily. The lights came on, and I blinked, looking around the room. My mementos didn't look like much, resting in the center of Arena's polished half-acre of desktop. The information was stored in the five tiny rods, less than an inch long, and the projector was a flat polyhedron the size of a pillbox. But the information they contained was worth more than all the treasures sunk in all the seas. This is merely a small sample, Sten said. The star surveys are said to be unbelievably complete. They represent a mapping tasks which would require a thousand years. The angles, Arena said. Just figuring the angles will take plenty time. And this is what you almost let him walk out with, Sten said. Arena gave me a slashing look. Don't let your indignation run away with you, Arena, Sten said. I don't think you remembered to mention the fuel situation to Mr. McLemore, did you? Arena turned to Sten, looming over the smaller man. Maybe you better button your lip, he said quietly. I don't like the way you use it. Afraid I'll lower you in the gentleman's esteem, Sten said. He looked Arena in the eye. Nuts to the gentleman's esteem, Arena said. You thought you'd squeeze me out, Arena, Sten said. You don't need me any more. You intended to let Macklemore and Williams go and have them followed. 
There was no danger of an escape since you knew they'd find no fuel. He turned to me. During your years in space, Mr. McLemore, technology moved on, and politics as well. Power fuels could be used to construct bombs. Ergo, all stations were converted for short half-life secondaries and the primary material stored at Fort Knox. You would have found yourself fuelless and therefore helpless. Mr. Arena would have arrived soon thereafter to seize the scout boat. What would he want with a boat without fuel? I asked. Mr. Arena was foresighted enough to stock up some years ago, Sten said. I understand he has enough metal hoarded to power your entire squadron for an indefinite time. Why tell this guy that? Arena asked. Kick him the hell out of here and let's get busy. You gab too much. I see that I'm tacitly reinstated as a partner, Sten said. Most gratifying. Max Arena is no welcher, Arena said. You tip me to the tapes, so you're in. Besides which, you perhaps sense that I have other valuable contributions to make. I figure you to pull your weight. What are your plans for Mr. McLemore? I told you, kick him out. He'll never wise up and cooperate with us. First, you'd better ask him a few more questions. Why? So he'll blow his head off and mess up my rug like... Arena stopped. You won't get anything out of him. A man of his type has a strong aversion to suicide. He won't die to protect trivial information. And if he does, we'll know there's something important being held out. I don't like messy stuff, Arena said. I'll be most careful, Sten said. Get me some men in here to secure him to a chair, and we'll have a nice long chat with him. No messy stuff, Arena repeated. He crossed to his desk, thumbed the lever, and spoke to someone outside. Sten was standing in front of me. Let him think he's pumping you, he hissed. Find out where his fuel is stored. I'm on your side. Then Arena was coming back, and Sten was looking at me indifferently. Arena had overcome his aversion to messy stuff sufficiently to hit me in the mouth now and then during the past few hours. It made talking painful, but I kept at it. How do I know you have Williams? I said. Arena crossed to his desk, took out a defaced snapshot. Here's his ID, he said. Take a look. He tossed it over. Sten held it up. Let me talk to him. For what? See how he feels about it. I mumbled. I was having trouble staying awake. I hadn't seen a bed for three days. It was hard to remember what information I was supposed to get from Arena. You'll join in if you do, Arena said. Give up. Don't fight. Let it happen. You say you've got fuel. You're a liar. You've got no fuel. I got plenty fuel, wise guy, Arena yelled. He was tired, too. Lousy crook, I said. Can't even cheat a little without getting caught at it. Who's caught now, Swabby? Arena was getting mad. That suited me. You're a lousy liar, Arena. You can't hide hot metal. Even Sten ought to know that. What else was in the cache, Macklemore? Sten asked for the hundredth time. He slapped me also for the hundredth time. It jarred me and stung. It was the last straw. If Sten was acting, I'd help him along. I lunged against the wires, swung a foot, and caught him under the ribs. He oofed and fell off his chair. Don't push me any farther, you small-time chiselers, I yelled. You got nothing but a cast brass gall to offer. There's no hole deep enough to hide out power metal, even if a dumb slob like you thought of it. Dumb slob? Arena barked. You think a dumb slob could have built the organization I did? Put this town in his hip pocket? I started stockpiling metal five years ago, a year before the ban. No hole deep enough, huh? It don't need to be so deep when it's got two feet of lead shielding over it. So you smuggled a few tons of lead into the public library and filed it under little Bo Peep. The two feet was there ahead of me, Weisenheimer. 
Remember the Polaris sub that used to be dry docked at Norfolk for the tourists to rubberneck? Mm, decommissioned and sold for scrap, I said, years ago. But not scrapped. Rusted in a scrapyard for five years. Then I bought her, beefed up her shielding, loaded her, and sank her in ten fathoms of water in Cartwright Bay. That, Sten said, is the information we need. Arena whirled. Sten was still sitting on the floor. He had a palm gun in his hand, and it was pointed at the monogram on Arena's silk shirt. A cross, Arena said, a lousy cross. Move back, Arena. Sten got to his feet, eyes on Arena. Where'd you have the stinger stashed? In my hand. Stop there. Sten moved over to me, eyes on Arena. He reached for the twisted ends of wire, started loosening them. I don't want to be nosy, I said, but just where the hell do you fit into this, Sten? Naval intelligence, Sten said. Arena cursed. I knew that name should have rung a bell. Vice Admiral Sten. The paper said you got yours when the Navy was purged. A few of us eluded the net. Arena heaved a sigh. Well, fellows, he said, and jumped. Sten's shot went wild, and Arena left hooked him down behind the chair. As he followed, Sten came up fast, landed a hard left, followed up, drove Arena back. I yanked at my wires almost. Then Arena, a foot taller, hammered a brutal left right, and Sten sagged. Carefully, Arena aimed a right cross to the jaw. Sten dropped. Arena wiped an arm across his face. The little man tried, mister. Let's give him that. He walked past my chair, stooped for Sten's gun. I heaved, slammed against him, and the light chair collapsed as we went over. Arena landed a kick. Then I was on my feet, shaking a slat loose from the dangling wire. Arena stepped in, threw a whistling right. I ducked it, landed a hard punch to the midriff, another on the jaw. Arena backed, bent over, but still strong. I couldn't let him rest. I was after him, took two in the face, stuck a haymaker that left him wide open just long enough for me to put everything I had in an uppercut that sent him back across his fancy desk. He sprawled then slid onto the floor. I went to him, kicked him lightly in the ribs. "'Where's Williams?' I said. I kept kicking and asking. After five tries, Arena shook his head and tried to sit up. I put a foot in his face, and he relaxed. I asked him again. "'You didn't learn this kind of tactics at the Academy,' Arena whined. "'It's the times,' I said. "'They have a coarsening effect.' Williams was a fancy pants, Arena said. No guts. He pulled a stopper. Talk plainer, I said, and kicked him again, hard. But I knew what he meant. Blew his lousy head off, Arena yelled. I gassed him and tried scope on him. He blew. He was out cold, and he blew. Yeah, I said, hypnotics will trigger it. Fancy goddamn wiring job. Arena muttered, wiping blood from his face. I got the wire and trussed Arena up. I had to clip him twice before I finished. I went through his pockets, looked at things, recovered my souvenirs. I went over to Sten. He was breathing. Arena was watching. He's okay, for Christ's sake, he said. What kind of punch you think I got? I hoisted Sten onto my shoulder. So long, Arena, I said. I don't know why I don't blow your brains out. Maybe it's that Navy Cross citation in your wallet. Listen, Arena said, take me with you. A swell idea, I said. I'll pick up a couple of tarantulas, too. You're trying for the hack, right? Sure, what else? The roof, he said. I got six eight rotos on the roof. One high-speed job. You'll never make the hack. Why tell me? I got eight hundred gun boys in this building alone. They know you're here. The hack is watched. The whole route. You can't get through. What do you care? If the boys bust in here after a while and find me like this, they'll bury me with the wire still on, Macklemore. How do I get to the roof? He told me. I went to the right corner, pushed the right spot, and a panel slid aside. I looked back at Arena. I'll make a good sailor, Macklemore, he said. 
Don't crawl, Arena, I said. I went up the short stair, came out onto a block square pad. Arena was right about the rotos, eight of them. I picked the four-place cad and got Sten tied in. He was coming to, muttering. He was still fighting Arena, he thought. I'll hold you. Uh, uh, get out. Take it easy, Sten, I said. Nothing can touch this bus. Where's the boat? I shook him. Where's the boat, Sten? He came around long enough to tell me. It wasn't far, less than an hour's run. Stand by, Admiral, I said. I'll be right back. Where? You... We need every good man we can get, I said, and I think I know a guy that wants to join the Navy. Epilogue Admiral Stinn turned away from the communicator screen. I think we'd be justified in announcing victory now, Commodore. As usual, he sounded like a professor of diction, but he was wearing a big grin. Whatever you say, Chief, I said with an even sappier smile. I made the official announcement that a provisional Congress had accepted the resignations of all claims by former office holders, and that new elections would be underway in a week. I switched over to power section. The NCO in charge there threw me a snappy highball. Damned if he wasn't grinning too. I guess we showed him who's got the muscle, Commodore, he said. Your firepower demonstration was potent, Max, I said. You must have stayed up nights studying the tapes. We've hardly scratched the surface yet, he said. I'll be crossing back to the Alaska now, Mac, Sten said. I watched him move across the half-mile void to the flagship. Five minutes later, the patrol detail broke away to take up surveillance orbits. They would be getting all the shore leave for the next few years, but I was glad my squadron had been detailed to go with the flagship on the deep space patrol. I wanted to be there when we followed those star surveys back to where their makers came from. Sten wasn't the man to waste time, either. He'd be getting underway any minute. It was time to give my orders. I flipped the communicator key to the squadron link-up. Escort commander to escort, I said. Now hear this. End of King of the City and End of a Bad Day for Vermin, Three Stories by Keith Lomer. These stories were read by Phil Chenevere.